so we're like walking in the backstage. Like, oh, this is an office here. Let's go inside. Hey, can we help you guys? Oh, yeah, we're uh, just looking for uh, the dressing room. Oh, the dressing room's that way. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go in this office. There's a potted plant. Let's take it. So, uh, so I had all these ideas of things I wanted to do uh, with, with Ambrose, because he was called the lunatic fringe, right? But he never did anything all that lunatic. And how can you be lunatic fringe if you never are a lunatic? So I wanted to do uh, like kind of a whole process of stuff, and it all would start with me smashing a potted plant over his head. I fucking hated that name. <laughs> but it all started when we were, we were doing a highlight reel in Tampa, and I was having Dean on the show, and we were backstage for real talking. Dean's like, hey, um, you're a... Uh, Highlight Reel set's pretty shitty now. <laughs> what happened? And I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, he used to have all these really cool, like, uh, like Salvador Dali-type statues and a big carpet with my name on it and a big hanging Geratron 5000, whatever it was. <laughs> and now he's like, yeah, all you have now are two bar stools and a TV on a monitor stand. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. He goes, like, you should, like, put a potted plant in there or something. And I was like, yeah, that's great. You should bring, you bring a potted plant down to the ring, and we'll, we'll put it in there as a decoration. So, so you guys think that the WWE is like this multi-billion dollar corporation, and everything is organized and figured out. Well, it's not really is the difference, and, and here's why. So we're in Tampa, and now we have to go look for a potted plant. <laughs> so we're like walking in the backstage. It's like, oh, this is an office here. Let's go inside. Hey, can we help you guys? Oh, yeah, we're uh, just looking for uh, the dressing room. Oh, the dressing room's that way. Oh, okay. Sorry. Fuck. <laughs> Let's go in this office. There's a potted plant. Let's take it. <laughs> so there you go. Jericho and Ambrose scouring the backstage uh, office areas of the Tampa Bay Arena looking for a potted plant for the highlight reel. So I put it in there, and the idea would be I'd have this potted plant every time I did a highlight reel, and I would eventually smash it which I did, and I smashed him over the head with it, and he went down, and he was off of SmackDown the next week in a major injury, and all anybody could think of was the fact that Mitch the Potted Plant had been killed. <laughs> Maybe next time Mitch can come on stage and do this fucking show. Let's see if Mitch can sell this place out. And that made me so mad because it wasn't the idea of the potted plant as a joke. It was like if I hit anybody over the head with like a 20-pound clay brick type of a apparatus, it would knock you the fuck out, right? And that was my point. But they were, all I was like, Mitch the potted plant, Mitch the potted plant. I go on WWE.com and says, Mitch the potted plant, destroyed by Jericho. I call this and take that fucking story down right now. <laughs> Mitch the potted plant. So then I have all, the, uh, all these ideas. So I go in to pitch these ideas to Vince in St. Louis. And I said, I have that idea where, you know, then Ambrose will de destroy my jacket in revenge. And then I'll put him in a straight jacket in revenge. And then, for extreme rules, we're going to have the first ever Ambrose Asylum. Because we were supposed to have a cage match. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do a cage match. And Vince is like, of course, a cage match isn't good enough for you. <laughs> Nothing's ever good enough for you. I was like, you're right. I want to do an Ambrose Asylum. The idea was the Ambrose Asylum would be this cage match where you would have all of these weapons hanging from the, from the ceiling, a barbed wire baseball bat and a, uh, you know, a, a, a sledgehammer and a, a, a mop or whatever the hell it was, you know, like a, a, a chains and all these other things that we decided to put up there. And, and so the idea would be that we would have this match in there. And leading up to it, so when Ambrose uh, destroyed my jacket, and when you, the thing is with this jacket, right, like the $500 jacket looks great until you put it next to the real one. And then it looks really bad. It looks like something that was made in India for 500 bucks. <laughs> so we had, we had to paint it and put more studs on it and polish it. And then we opened up the lining and put all these extra wires and uh, the computer panels and all this other stuff. And then uh, when Dean put it on, Vince, the idea was like I would come to the ring or to the stage, do my thing. I'd fall down, I'd get attacked. Lights, uh, then, then the jacket would get back up, go to the ring, and the lights would turn on as Ambrose. 
And Vince wanted Ambrose to do cartwheels down the ramp. <laughs> Have him do a, a cartwheel or something, a break dance down to the... To the. <laughs> Dean's like, I can't do cartwheels. <laughs> Not a very good break dancer either. So anyways, he goes down to the ring, and then I'm like, no, 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 and he destroys it, and he rips it open and pulls the wires out and pulls the fucking circuit boards out. And the thing that's funny is, like, during the day, this jacket kept going out. It just would go out randomly, because it's cheap, right? When he started pulling the wires out and pulling the stuff out, the one thing that didn't, it wouldn't go out. The light stayed on the whole time. He actually was, like, pulling stuff out, and, the, like, I actually, when I went down to the ring, I'm like, this thing is still fucking on. There's one piece of material. I'm one, like, pull the damn thing out. So that was kind of the start of it, and then we finally end up uh, at the uh, uh, Ambrose Asylum match. Now, leading up to this, the one thing that Dean kept pitching is he's like, I really wanted to get some thumbtacks in the match. And I was like, you're never going to get any thumbtacks in the match. He's like, no, I really want to try. I'm like, listen, dude, you want to get thumbtacks in the match? That's fine. You want to take a bump in thumbtacks? You go right ahead, buddy. That's called foreshadowing. <laughs> so um, finally he texts me. He's like, yeah, I got, the, I got Vince to agree to thumbtacks. <laughs> Apparently Dean Ambrose's texts sound like Dean Ambrose as I'm reading them. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, I you know, finally got Vince to agree to the tax. And. I guess he had tried to get tax uh, in the WrestleMania match he had against Brock Lesnar, but Brock didn't want to do it, so he still kept pushing, 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 and finally he agrees to get the tax. I'm like, this is great. Good for you. Awesome. We got the finish for our match. And then, of course, Vince calls me and tells me that he's changed his mind. <laughs> and now Dean's going to win the match. I'm like, whatever. I'm a professional. I'm a, I'm a trained professional. I don't care. And then I start thinking, like, wait a second. He's already agreed to the thumbtacks. If, uh, if I'm losing the match, that means I have to take the bump in the thumbtacks. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but it's like, you know, I'd never done that before. And people said, like, why would Jericho take a bump in thumbtacks at 45 years old? After all he had done, the reason why is it was better for the match. I did what was best for the match, you know? And I kind of got off on it, too. <laughs> but the thing is, so we do the thing, and you know, we have this match, and it was really long, and it was kind of real, uh, not the most exciting of matches, and we've never had one before, so you do your best, and sometimes it just doesn't click. But finally, he goes up, he pulls down the, the bucket, and inside the bucket, there's a velvet bag, and inside the bag, he pulls it over, and the, all these thumbtacks, come, hundreds of thumbtacks, people start going, ah. So the thing that was the worst about the thumbtacks is that, like, okay, so... Um, it's not the fact that you're going to take the actual bump. It's the anticipation of it. Like, thinking about it was the worst, like, for a day before, hours before. And so, finally, we do the match, and, 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 and something happens, something happens. I jump up for a code breaker. He catches me. He turns around, and he's going to powerbomb me in the tax. Well, pause right there. And that, to me, is when, like, time stands still. <laughs> and I was thinking about um, uh, the Titanic when... Uh, when uh, <laughs> When uh, Leonard, uh, uh, Leonard, is it Leonard? <laughs> Leonard DiCaprio? <laughs> Leonardo. Sorry, DiCaprio. Pretentious bastard. Um, <laughs> but I remember in Titanic when he says, like, jumping in cold water, it's like a thousand knives stabbing you at the same time, right? And that's exactly what it felt like, except for it was like a thousand small little tacks stabbing at the same time. And it's hard because when you go down and take the bump into it, it's a shock. It's like when you jump in cold water and everything goes, <gasps> and that's what it's like, oh, oh. and so like I'm kind of arching up and, and, you know, like doing like some weird yoga shit like this. Because you have nowhere to go, right? Because you got tacks all inside you and they're, they're stuck in you. So anywhere you move, you can feel it kind of grinding into your flesh. And so like you kind of just like want to just stay there. But I couldn't stay there because then I had to get up and take a DDT into it. So then I'm thinking, okay, these tacks are all going to go in my eye. I'm going to be like crazy tack eye man. <laughs> like, oh. So I go like this, and of course I take it on my hand, and then I get three of them in my hand. And those hurt the worst. It was like the lion with the splinters in the paw. And it's just like, oh. And so, of course, being the pure showman that I am, I made sure the camera's on me. And I'm like, no. Oh, oh. 
Because it really hurts, but I want to get some mileage out of it. So at least let the camera see it, right? That's showbiz. So then uh, uh, I finally get pinned, and you don't even, like I said, you don't know where you want to go. And I finally kind of sit up, and you're kind of walking like you really have to go to the bathroom really bad, kind of like this, you know? Because everything you do, you feel it. I go to the back, and I'm like, okay, film this. I want this filmed. Or maybe they just filmed it. Some, somebody was filming it. And I said, I want you to count all of the tacks. I want to know exactly how many tacks are, are in my body. So they're taking them out one by one by one by one by one. 68 tacks. So, um, and I still wonder why they were filming it. Is there going to be a network special of the, <laughs> of the tax of Jericho? <laughs> Take them out, man. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's 68 tax in this little bucket. And uh, I go back to the dressing room. And I'm now I'm just like gone through hell and like oh, the match was horrible and you get all these you feel like a pin cushion, and I go to take uh, to to sit down I go to kind of loosen my jeans because I was wearing jeans because it was a street fight and that's what you wear in a street fight now <laughs> duh, and I go and sit down and it's like oh my god what is that ah, and I pull my pants down and sticking right in my ass <laughs> is the 69th tack. And that's true. There actually was 69 tax. People are like, oh, sure, you're just saying that because a 69 is a sexual position. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you stupid idiot. It was actually fucking 69 tax, okay? You think it'd be that obvious, right? <laughs> 